Google Pest Control Marketer Grow your business like never before Call 770-993-0004 Well, hello, folks. This is Hal Coleman along with Mike Stewart, and welcome to another episode of Pest Control Marketing Live and the Pest Control Marketing Podcast. Uh, this is the only live streaming internet TV show totally dedicated to helping PCOs and WCOs grow your business, increase your sales, and make more deposits at your local bank. So with that being said, Mike, how are you doing today? Oh, I'm excited about, uh, you know, generally we don't timestamp our podcast, but this is during the holiday season of of 2021 and and i uh got grandkids excited for santa claus and you know this is a, this is a good one this is a real yeah good one. it is a good one it's uh um uh, you know great time you know, once i get my christmas tree up out of the basement which i think it weighs like 1214 pounds or at least that's what it seems like it weighs it says it on the box 1214 right there. and it's yeah 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 Oh man, it's a big three piece thing and it's heavy and getting it up the stair, getting that thing put up. Once I get it put up, uh, I went with an artificial tree about three years ago Mm -hmm. and it broke my heart, but you know, it's like, uh, they're pretty, they're pretty nice. Yeah. I don't know. You get one of those pre-lit ones. They're pretty nice. And oh yes, got a million lights on it and you just put it up and plug it in. But the reason I got it was it was kind of an impulse buy. I was in Home Depot looking for something and I, and they had all these trees sitting out there on demo. One of them looked like a real uh, Frazier fir. It mm-hmm. just looked like a real tree. And I went over and looked at it. I said, I can't believe that tree is not real. Yeah. And uh, I told my wife, I said, you know, you've been talking about getting an artificial tree, but I found one over at Home Depot that's, I swear it looks like a real tree. And, we went back over there and looked at it and it was the only one they had left and uh, bought that sucker. Well, you know, that kind of is a good lead into today's subject. You know, you had a hard time making a decision and then, you, yeah. <laughs> you, you decision. know, that's true. That's true. It's uh, uh, we're going to talk about being decisive today, Mike. And uh, you know, this uh, really spoke to me when I, came up with the idea and told you about it and and then so you could do our little promo you said what are we going to talk about and then i started thinking about it in my own life and the things that i need to be doing and and times when i haven't have not been decisive but i came up with a little story about a pest control operator to kind of illustrate the frustration with me with with you and i you know both being uh coaches uh we struggle with our clients sometimes not being decisive about they just can't seem to pull the trigger and do the things that we uh request them to do in the coaching program but when i sold my pest control business 15 years ago and uh to start a coaching business in for pest control operators and the first this was right about the time I sold my business. The first all day workshop that I did, I put it together. Uh, and it's still a great workshop today. Uh, but I charged $997 to come to this all day workshop with my usual guarantee. People said $997. I said, look, you come to the workshop at the end of the day, if you don't think it was worth the money and you don't, you aren't excited about the changes you can make. I'll give you your money back. I said, just tell me. I'll refund your money. It won't cost you anything. So uh, I was on a committee with the Georgia Pest Control Association at the time. Uh, and uh, it was actually a public relations committee. And there was a guy, I can't remember his name right now. And I wouldn't wouldn't say it because he might be listening. But uh, he uh, he called me on the phone. He had a, he was telling me his story. He said, you know, I got this little pest control company. I'm a one man operator and I'm struggling. I'm not making any money. I've had my business for about three years and my wife, she just wants me to throw in the towel and 
go get a job. He said, I just don't know how to grow, get this business growing and I need help. And he said, I was calling to talk to you about that workshop that I saw you advertise the other day on, uh, on the internet. And, and I said, uh, yeah, I said, oh man, I said, this workshop would really help you. I said, it was, it's all about how to make the phone ring and changes you could make right now. We talked for a few minutes about his business. And I basically, I'm sitting there saying to myself, this guy's not doing anything to grow his business. He doesn't have a clue how to grow his business. He's a great guy and I'm sure he does great service. Uh, but he doesn't have a clue. And, and this workshop would just, I said, this workshop would just change, change your life, man. It will, you can just go right out and, and start doing some things really quickly to make that phone ring. And it will make the phone ring. He said, great, great. He said, uh, well, how much is it? And I said, it's $997. He's like, whoa, $997, man. I, yeah, I, I'd, I'd love to have, but yeah, I, there's no way I can afford $997. I said, well, you know, you'll, you'll quadruple that amount of money in no time uh, with your business. And by the end of the year, you will have made enough to pay that time and time again. And he said, I know, but I just, I, I can't afford it. I said, uh, well, Okay, you know, but think about it, okay? Think this is a this would be a life-changing experience for you in particular. I know it would. He said, "Well, I'll think about it." So, you know, there's indecisive number 1. So, I came home and I started thinking about it that night. It was like on on my heart that this guy, I knew how much of a positive impact this workshop would have on this guy. It would change his life. It really would. It might even save his marriage. So I called him up a couple of days later and I said, listen, I've been thinking about you and, and I want you to come to this workshop. He said, I know how I, I really want to come to it, but I just can't afford that. <coughs> I said, well, listen, here's what I want to do. I want you to come to the workshop and it's not going to cost you a penny. I said, just come to it. And I said, don't tell anybody that I'm doing this, but I want to do this for you. I said, come to the workshop. And I said, down the road, a couple of years from now, five years from now, 10 years from now, if you say to yourself one day, you know, I got a lot of money in the bank now. My company's doing great. I think I'll pay Hal for that workshop I took a few years ago. I said, you can send me the money. But I said, if you never do, it's okay, because this is just a gift. I want to do this for you. He said, man, you would do that for me? I said, I would. I would. You're going to come to it? And what do you think he said? He said, uh, well, let me think about it. <laughs> I said, let me think about it. I said, so here's really indecisiveness number two. I'll let you think, what's there to think about, man? I'm inviting you free. It's not going to cost you anything. It'll change your life. It'll change your business. I know. Well, let me think about it. And I'll, uh, so I said, okay. So I didn't hear from him from a few days. And uh, it was like, a, you know, a week before the event. And I called him up and I said, so are you going to come to it? He said, uh, you know, I just, I'm not going to be able to make it this time, but you know, if you do it again, you know, keep me in mind, maybe I will. But he said, I just, I, I just, uh, I think I'll just pass on it this time. And maybe I can. So I came away thinking what's really going on here. What's really going on here. What's causing him to be so indecisive. And, and what it really boils down to is the fear of change. You know, that's usually the root of indecisiveness. Uh, I think, at least in my opinion, it is. Uh, he was just too comfortable being in the mess he was in, I guess. But he couldn't pull the trigger and he didn't come to the workshop. So uh, that's a, that's the example is the first one that came to my mind about dealing with somebody that's indecisive and the impact it had on this guy. I, I don't know what happened to the guy. I really haven't seen him and. That was 15 years ago, and I haven't seen him in 12 years. But I've often wondered what happened to him, and if he still, if he was able to 
keep his business or his marriage or whatever. But uh, I just know what a what a positive impact that would have had on. But he couldn't pull the trigger. He couldn't he couldn't say yes or no until the end, and said no. Well, you know how the the whole thing the the title of this particular podcast today is being decisive is is, is the key to success. Uh, making a conscious decision that you're going to follow through. Um, you know, years ago, Larry Latimer, our, our dear mentor and, and mutual friend said, Mike, if you want to be successful with your business, he said, the first thing I'd have you do, I, I'll never forget. He said, I want you to read two books. And I said, uh, I said, what books are those? And he said, think and grow rich by Napoleon Hill and how to win friends and influence people by Dale Carnegie. He said, read those two books. And so I took the action. I, I, I made a decision. I said, I'm going to read these books. And you know what I learned is I'm an auditory learner, uh, which changed my life. Um, I read those books and I had made a decision to, to write, read those books, but I didn't comprehend them until I got the audio books. And when I listened to the audio books, it, it, it all made sense. It all crystallized. And one of the things that Napoleon Hill talks about is, you know, being able to make decisions, you know, uh, you don't make quick, uh, reckless decisions, but being decisive is in Napoleon Hill's Think and Grow Rich. And I've told people today, what's interesting to me is you can go to YouTube and and listen to the whole Napoleon Hill book for free right now. And I've had people go, yeah, that's a good idea. And then they never make the decision to do it. So you got to be objective with yourself. You got to be honest with yourself. Are you standing in the way of your success? You know, are you not making the decisions to, to be successful? Because uh, if you let fear, if you let anything that stands in your way of making the decision to be successful, whatever that is, um, then, then, you know, you've got to accept the responsibility that it's your fault. Don't blame others for your own failures. And, and another thing that, you know, it's in fact, we have a question here from uh, someone, uh, uh, obviously a young man with Pharaoh pest control. He's asking the question it really is, is, is an interesting question. He says, you know, uh, uh, he was wanting to know prices. And I used to have a friend say price is never an issue when value is proven. And, and that's really. what yeah. And, and so the price is irrelevant. Uh, you know, do you invest money in food? Uh, or do you, you, you know, I mean, we don't like high prices of food, but you know, you find food you can afford, you're going to starve. Well, you know, coaching is the food of success. I never met a successful millionaire that didn't have a coach or a mentor in their lives yeah. and really didn't need them, you know, at some, but they still did it because they knew being held accountable had such a tremendous value. Yeah. So you, you look at any professional athletes, or the, you know, they had coaches all their lives. And, uh, you know, speaking of Larry, you, I, I, I believe this to be true from my experience, but I'm not a psychologist. Okay. Although I do play one on TV sometimes. Right. I'm not a psychologist, but I believe that you can, that you can learn to be decisive because Larry Latimer, when we first started working together in marketing, you know, I knew him for the music business way back when we, Larry and I both worked for you, but, uh, but, uh, uh, Larry, we, we had a four hour meeting one day about marketing, which changed my life. It totally changed my life in that four hour meeting at the Waffle House. And Larry said, we could use my pest control company kind of as a guinea pig. So he said, well, what I want you to do is we started talking about rats and he said, I'm kind of showing me how to set myself apart. And what do you do when you do an inspection for rats? I said, well, you know, we do an inspection, determine what kind of rodent it is, how they're getting in, where's their food source, any damage that they've done species and are we going to give a guarantee or not? Are we going to use baiting or trap or whatever? I came up with about seven things and I said, that's about it. 
And he said, well, you just held up seven fingers. I said, I, I did. He said, yeah. He said, so I want you to go home and write me up a description of a seven point rodent evac survey and evaluation of a house. I said, okay. So I went home and I started writing this thing up. And, and about an hour later, I sent it to Larry. And he called me. He was just laughing. He said, I would have been willing to have bet everything I own that I would never hear from you again about this rat survey. Uh -huh. But he said, an hour later, you send me the dang thing. Right. He said, he said, that is incredible. So he started giving me other assignments. And he said, you know, he said, you're, you're, if I tell you, I have to be careful what I tell you to do, because you're going to go right out and do it and get it back to me. And he said, but I learned that through those little things he was teaching me, and now you and I working together, you and I'll come up with a big, big project sometimes. It's going to require a lot of work and a lot of time, but I don't have any problem about being decisive because I learned to be decisive in that way. I think a lot from working with Larry Latimer on the little things. Right. And that you just transfer them over to the big things. Well, that's, that's the whole point. And, and I remember a big part of Napoleon Hill, um, was, was talking about, you know, being able to make a decision, you know, uh, setting, we used to talk about it at seminars. Are you sitting on the fence? You know, that was our, our analogy, you know, because uh, fence setters don't succeed. People who get off the fence and do something, make a decision to do something. Uh, my buddy, a mentor of mine, Armin Morin, um, uh, was selling Think and Grow Rich. In fact, he had a, a copies of the book, Think and Grow Rich. And he had taped a dollar bill under everybody's seat in the seminar. He had, nobody knew there was a dollar bill under uh, the seats. And he holds up the book and he says, this is the key to your success. And he says, this book I'm selling today for $1. And he said, uh, so you need to come all the way up here uh, to, the, to the stage. And I got a box of these books and you got to hand me a dollar and I'll give you the keys to the, your success with Think and Grow Ranch. Now, you need to make a decision to come buy this book. Now, he said, I know your objection is I ain't got a dollar. Doesn't, the amount is irrelevant. You know, I don't have $997. I can't afford that. I, I, you know, when you put those negative thoughts into the, into the ethers, well, then you get exactly back what you put there. He said, I know you're thinking I don't have the money to buy this book. He said, if you'll look under your chair right now, there's a dollar bill taped under your chair. Every one of these chairs in here. And I know you have a dollar to come up here and buy this book. Well, everybody laughed and they got the dollar and they, and, and you'd be surprised. Some people didn't even take the dollar that was given to them and went and bought the book. Now the majority did. And he said, there's a lesson here. If you expect to make a buck, you have to get off your butt. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. That's, I love that. You know, and, and it's all about being decisive and it was all about the, the, the wisdom of be, of, of Napoleon Hill. And one of the things that we had a question here, Hal, uh, that I want people to be aware of, we, we both, you know, I, I can go up to people at networking meetings and say, you want an internet marketing coach? You know what the answer is 100% of the time? No, they're thinking in their mind, why would I need an internet marketing coach? Why would I need a SERP term jingle? Why would I need a pest control marketing coach? You know, that's the first thing. Why would I need it? And then the next thing is $900 or $500 an hour. I mean, my God, it's all about understanding that you have a problem. Your business isn't growing. And we have the solution and we can prove we have the solution. And, and this, this young man or uh, may not be a young man. He said, he says here in the comments, how says, uh, do you work with starter companies? And I thought that was a great question. Yeah. Well, here's, you remember that starter company, Savannah termite. And Mike Warren was Mike Warren. Yeah. Didn't the, guy that, 
didn't have a license, didn't have the name of his company, didn't know he didn't know the difference between a ladybug and an American cockroach. <laughs> and uh go watch, go go back and listen to the Savannah Termite and Pest Control uh podcast with Mike Warren about a guy in 2017. I remember starting to work with him in 2017 and how he was a starter company and w- what's going on with him today. I'll tell you what's going on. He sold the sad, th- the sad thing is people are in a company for a few years and they have a fortune invested in their vehicle designs and their websites and everything else b- before they get involved with somebody that shows them that it wasn't done correctly. You know, it's, well, uh, I mean, there, there's, there's, uh, Armin used to say success leaves traces. <clears throat> and I I love that. When you look at what other successful people do and you emulate it with your own twist on it and make a decision to do that, then you can repeat success. When you try it your way and it's not working and you keep doing it, that's called insanity. Yeah. Trying trying the same th- doing the same thing over and over again expecting different results is what Einstein said was insanity. So, you know, you and I started this several years ago. And we've all been students of marketing. Uh, I love the online world. You've been a master. You taught me about the offline world. I still go to a networking group uh, for educational purposes. You know, I, I can't tell you the good that has come from going out in the offline world and making relationships. Yeah, so we, teach, we work on that. I work on that a lot with my clients. The, right. the science. Well, yeah. At any rate, uh, Pharaoh here says, "I will. I want to change." I will do anything to succeed. Now that's a bold statement that I'm looking here in the comments and uh, tell him to tell him to go buy five gallons of chocolate brown paint, a roller and a brush and show up at my house tomorrow morning at <laughs> nine o'clock. <laughs> well, you just ran him off, Hal. Oh no. <laughs> well, you know, some- uh, yeah, we, I uh, would love to talk with him and, uh, and, uh, well, you know, we, he, but, you, well, your phone number is up here, you know, and that's yeah. the thing. We always give out your phone number, 770-993-0004. That's make the decision to call Hal and discuss getting a mentor and a coach. And then, of course, most of the time people, when they call you, Hal, they end up calling me too. Um, but, you know, I'm just going to focus on them calling you. And I want to I tell something else. I want to show it real quick here. Right now on the screen is Hal's book. Uh, bottom line, how to grow a pest control business. And we give that book away absolutely free. We've got so many solutions that you need to make decisions about. Um, well, Mike, you know, they can they can buy it on Amazon for $30. I'd rather them do that. But, but well, I, I know. Yeah, and but you're this, giving it away free here. Golly. Well, you know, because we want to give enough away to prove that we're real. I don't know how many people how I've talked to that uh, have gone to how to grow a pest control business.com. In fact, you can Google how to grow a pest control business, Hal Coleman, and you're going to find this book and they just put your name and email address in and, and then they become kind of part of our family. Uh, and, and that's, that's what makes a decision. The, that's, that decision is um, what can make a difference. I mean, we have uh, a fact coming up this February in 2022, every year, uh, right after the Super Bowl it's this year, I believe it's going to be February 26th. Uh, we have an online event that is a great way, inexpensive ways. I mean, we got all the way from free, inexpensive to to the Mac Daddy, which is working one on one with Hal. Uh, we've only got so many openings, uh, but you know, right now there's a few openings, and um, and both of us work one on one with people. And in fact, I love to quote our good buddy Fred Talley. He says, "Mikey." I hope you and Hal never quit on us. <laughs> yeah. The old Fred, he's a good one. He, he is a good one. So but anyway, they, I, you can, they can go to the website and read the testimonials from people who have come to our, the pest control marketing, uh, I mean, the next level PCO marketing workshop. This will be the, I think the fifth year that we've done it. And we were doing it live at the embassy suites down by the Atlanta airport and had people come from as far away as New Zealand to it uh, one guy did and uh but people came from all over the country they came from canada they came from the bahamas uh and uh you know and it was it's great doing it that way but this way you don't have to uh 
get on a plane. You don't have to go out of town. You don't have to pay a hotel room. You don't have to buy food. You don't have to be away from your business. And last year was the first time we've done it virtually. And we went from a, a two day event to a one day event. And the reason we, we get, we get just about as much in there, but we just eliminated a lot of socializing. So yeah. that. uh, but at the end of our one day event, I was telling somebody about it the other day, the one we did last year, uh, I do the morning session. You do the afternoon session. We have a night, you know, breaks and, uh, lunch break. You're on your own there. <laughs> but, uh, uh, at the end we have question and answer. And then we, we, uh, we met at the, uh, the, uh, zoom bar, I'll call it. After we came back, we had a happy hour and, People had a beer and a cocktails, and and I think a couple had cigars, and 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 we just hung out and talked. And uh, some were our current clients; they shared with people, and it was. I had about as much fun doing the happy hour uh, as I did the whole show because mm -hmm. it was just right down to the nitty gritty, you know, question and answers and laughing, and it was a lot of fun. So. Uh, I hope if you're listening to this, you will uh, seriously consider being decisive about coming to the next level PCO marketing workshop in February, because as always, as is with everything that event that, that, that we do that I've ever done. And Mike, that I think you've probably ever done is that at the end of the day, if you, if you pay money and you come to the event and at the end of the day, you say, how I came to that thing. And, I don't think it was worth my time or my money to tell you the truth. I said, well, uh, let me just get you a refund right now. And so, you, you know, there's no risk there. You're going to be happy or you're not going to pay a penny. That's the guarantee that we teach our clients and we live by the things that we teach. Uh, I would never tell anybody to, issue that kind of guarantee if I wasn't willing to issue it myself. So absolutely. I think the right. thing is, is we're so confident in what we do that we're, we're not fearful of, of offering, a, a, an ironclad guarantee. Um, you know, the Dan Kennedy, another mentor of us all, you know, I, I, I'm amazed how many people I see you ever heard of Dan Kennedy. No, never. Well, I mean, you know, Dan is probably one of the most successful mentors to entrepreneurs in the world. And he always said, you got to have risk reversal. He says, put the risk on you. Don't put it on the customer. You'll be surprised what a difference that when people feel like that, that you have their best interest in heart uh, by accepting the risk of that. You know, if you think that I didn't do a good job, then we'll give you your money back. And uh, now that means do a good job. You can't do a bad job and, and have risk reversal because mm -hmm. it'll blow up on you. But you know what? If you got own a business, you better do everything you can. Napoleon Hill says, don't give a hundred percent, give 110%, you know, go the extra mile. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. you know, all these little sayings are things that I learned because I had a mentor, uh, years ago, uh, and lots of mentors. And then I became a mentor by being mentored by other people. In fact, you know, the guys that were, uh, Dan Kennedy's group, um, uh, wasn't doing online video. And because of me, uh, Bill Glazer and his department, I, I coached them on how to start doing videos on YouTube. And now they're very successful with that. Uh, a lot of the big successful mentors and coaches of the world, uh, I was doing online video when it was, you know, uh, what was that old song? I was a video when video wasn't cool. <laughs> yeah. 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 And well, you so, know, the, the reason that this stuff, were, you mentioned that, that, this stuff works. It's because it's so simple. It's not brain surgery. It's just so simple that, but, but people don't, you don't know what you don't know. Okay. So, yeah, but sure. there's no, it's nothing complicated about it. And we do it over and over and over and over and over again with our clients. And when they've been doing it for years, so there's no guesswork there. If, here's what we tell you to do. If you do this, people are going to find you and they're going to call you and want to do business with you. And yeah. it's not any one big thing. It's a thousand little things it's and a thousand not, little things. Not look complicated. You know, you mentioned a while ago before I forget this about, uh, Armin taping the dollar under the seats. Mm -hmm. and it made me chuckle because you talk about decisiveness. Now 
one time I did a, I did a group. I don't remember where I was speaking. I think it was at a rotary club. And I said, now I've got a, 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 a surprise for y'all today for one person in here is going to get a big, big surprise. And I said, right now, uh, I want everybody in here to reach under your seat and see if you find anything under there. And, uh, and let me, and they all start reaching under their seat. And I said, I have, before y'all got here, I went in and taped a live scorpion under one of the chairs and like 50 people went, ah, <laughs> <laughs> they, they were totally decisive about getting their hands out from under that chair. I mean, a couple of people almost passed out. <laughs> Well, uh, yeah, so, so, sometimes I, I think I, I I need to make the decision to have you committed to somebody. You never know what a bug guy is going to do in a group of people, you know. I think we need to make the decision that uh, we've had a really good show this morning, but it's thir- at the 30-minute mark. So uh, I appreciate you, Hal Coleman. I wish you the best uh, for the holiday season here in 2021. And let's let's go get them in 2022. Same here, Mike. Uh, I wish everybody uh, listening, if you're listening live to this or if you hear it before the holidays, uh, before uh, December 25th or January uh, 1st, uh, happy holidays, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and and whatever you celebrate, I hope you have a great one. And uh, Mike and and I are going to be off to a grand start this year. We've got such so much good stuff planned for our event and for our clients too. So, uh, uh, Mike, take it easy and don't have too much eggnog and, and, uh, we'll catch you on the other side, folks. Thank you for listening to this episode of pest control marketing dot live and the pest control marketing podcast. Hal Coleman has been active in the pest control industry for over 40 years, including owning and operating his own successful pest control business for 18 years. He now devotes his time to helping other PCOs and other WCOs double, triple, and even quadruple their businesses faster than they ever imagined. Be sure to check out his website, pestcontrolmarketer.com. For more information about Hal's coaching program, you can reach him at 770 773-0004 or email him hal at halcoleman.com Mike Stewart is known as the internet audio and video guy since the birth of the internet Mike has been showing small business owners how to get more new customers increase their sales and grow their businesses online using audio and video now with iPhones and Android phones for more information about Mike's coaching program and his online training courses, visit MikeStewartCoaching.com or email him Mike at InternetAudioGuide.com. Google Pest Control Marketer. Grow your business like never before. Call 770-993-0004.